session. My name is Susan Smith. I've been at the at Toastmasters for five years and served as various club officer and district roles. I've served as secretary, treasurer, vice president of public relations, recognition chair for the th past three years. And this year I am your open house coordinator. And you can, and you can find my uh, email address on the District 38 website. And today's objectives are to learn the purpose of an open house, how to run a successful open house, and what to do during and after the meetings. And what are some of the benefits of attending an open, uh, attending a meeting, you are wondering? Most people come to meetings to become a, be a better public speaker but it goes beyond communication skills, both verbal and non-verbally. You also learn leadership skills, which you should encourage everyone to participate in becoming a club officer or even participate in the, in the district. It also targets for you to listen for those ums and errs, do some critical thinking when speaking, give feedback for evaluations and time management or a few benefits. In your early Toastmaster journey, you will learn skills like introducing yourself, use appropriate language, vocal variety, usage of visual aids, and how to be persuasive. And the purpose of an open house for club growth is you want your club to thrive, to make an impression that everyone cares and everyone goes grows through their speeches, evaluations, and public speaking. Every speech you do, you learn different things like vocal variety, body language, and how to use it, how to use the stage. We encourage each other to push ourselves outside of your comfort zone to make yourself better at what you do. And how to and what is an open house? It, uh, you have the entire club to participate. You can do a demo meeting, usually with a Toastmaster, one speaker, one evaluator, and table topics, where guests are encouraged to participate. A demo me meeting mimics the structure of a regular meeting. An open house would have refreshments, decorations, and a headliner speaker. But remind your guests that the headliner speaker is better, but you will not be there unless you do the work, meaning that you participate in the roles like the timer, grammarian, do the speeches from pathways and evaluations. You can make up some flyers for everyone to part for to distribute within your community. You can uh, print out the flyers for the gym, library, Starbucks, grocery stores, or some examples. How to, how to make meetings fun. Be creative. The Toastmasters can add stories, facts, or quotes mm -hmm. related mm -hmm. to the theme. Members can dress in costumes and provide food and decorations. Table topics and speeches can even evolve around the theme. Examples of some theme meetings would be um, one of the clubs that I participate in. We do icebreaker thon. And this is where you do your first speech and, and, and they omit the table topics to keep within time. Another example would be when your club was chartered. The club can have a little potluck party for the month that it was chartered. When new, uh, when new members join, you can have a ceremony to give out the new member orientation certificates. How to run a successful open house. Des designate a lead person. You do not have to do it, do it alone. Have the entire club join in the fun. 
ask everyone to invite at least one person to the meeting. It could be a family member, friend, or significant other. Have everyone bring a little, a little bite of food if you plan on having refreshments after the meeting. Market your open house. Advertise, you can advertise on the website, district website. District 38 has a newsletter we send out each month to every member. Uh, you can also advertise on Facebook, LinkedIn, Meetup. And you can also do flyers and hand them out to the library, Starbucks, gym, train stations, anywhere there is a lot of people that that they uh, go to. Nobody wants to join a group that doesn't greet guests, start on time, or get guests involved. Display your Toastmaster banner. Have a theme, use decorations, have a guest book. Make your open house memorable and make a first impression. They will remember you. Uh, we'll run a well-organized and fun meeting, which we just went through. And then warmly ask guests to join or return. At the end of the meeting, ask your feedback, ask for feedback as to how to, the meeting went and how they thought the meeting was ran. Sometimes the prospective member will join right away or they may come back for another meeting. Have member forms ready and answer any questions they have about the meeting or club. For members who do not join right away, collect their information, name, email, and have a guest packet ready for them. Follow up via email or even a phone call. Follow up on guests where they have not been at the meeting for, for a while. And uh, has anybody ever participated in a virtual open house before? I have. Yes, I have too. Hi, Brid. Did you want to, to uh, uh, have any ideas for how they would like to share share with the group? Well, I attended a Positively Charged on Thursday. We had Rhonda speak as one of the Unvice President membership. So I did everything that you had suggested, sent emails to everyone. And we had a really good turnout. We had 23 people. That's good. And Rhonda spoke and Ruth spoke. And I evaluated Ruth. We had Toastmasters. It was it was really a good meeting. It was great, fantastic. Thank you. Anybody else wants to share? Okay. And uh, I can't say enough about advertising. It's very important that you have new members join. As mentioned before, you can post on Facebook, LinkedIn, Meetup, Instagram, newsletter, and even the district website. You can uh, change your, the virtual background every section of the meeting if you have enough pictures. You can even get a open house sign to display as a background. That's what I was thinking of. And then for guest speakers, we have guest speakers to attend. You uh, may want to ask like a former champion chief speaker to attend your meeting and be a headliner. But just let your prospective members know that you will not be this good until you do the work through pathways and you work through your speeches and evaluations. And then you can follow up on guests that has not been at the meeting for a while. You can invite them via email or phone on guests who has not been at the meeting for a while. 
they may be out of town or out of commission for a while and may want to come back to revisit your club. And then you can welcome guests as they Zoom, as they lo log into Zoom. You can say, hi, and how are you doing? How did you see the, the advertisement for Toastmasters? And how do you know? And do you know, what do you know about Toastmasters? And then there's, uh, you can do door prizes if you wish, you don't have to, but they cannot be gift cards. It cannot, it cannot be dollar amounts. And then you can uh, play games, for example, kahoot.com. Uh, this is where you answer questions on your phone. It could be about Toastmasters or even history facts to make it even more fun or make it a holiday game. And then you could do uh, like little door prizes for the first place and second place. Or you, you can even have social events outside of Toastmasters at a like a park or a board game store. Well, Susan, um, one thing it positively charged, it was stipulated that everybody who brought a guest could be entered into a raffle. Okay. So then what happened is there were two gifts. So the person who won the raffle and her guest got the gift. Was that just, just a comment or was that a, a question? Not... So was that just a comment or was that a question that you were asking? No, I'm not asking. I'm talking about the door prizes that you have on here. Okay. I said that the way Positively Charged did it, and I put it in the email that whoever brought a guest would be entered into a raffle. And then at the Positively Charged virtual meeting, a person was picked and her guest, and they both got a gift. They got, both got a prize. That's all I wanted to say. Follow up on what you have here at Door Prize. Thanks. Sorry for interrupting. It's okay. Susan, there's a couple of other raised hands. Linda and Dory. Okay. okay. We were curious, why can the why can't the prizes be gift cards? That that is a Toastmasters International rule. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And our IPDD, Immediate Past District Director, Paula Tichi has her hand raised. Paula, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. I'm interested to hear what Susan is sharing. But my question actually was directed toward Carol. Carol, I'm just curious as what did you give away as your door prize? Because that's one of the things that we always wonder, what should we give away? What, what can people really appreciate receiving? So if you would share that. Please. I would love to share that, Paula. But the thing is, I don't know what Karen had. <laughs> She's the president. I do not know what she had that she gave away. But I can find out before the end of this meeting and let you know. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I appreciate it. And since we're on that topic, Susan, do you mind if we just ask the question of those that are participating? What have been some of the more well-received door prizes or some kind of prizes or handouts that have been given out during a, an open house. Does anyone have any good ideas to share with the, the team, the group? No. <laughs> I don't, Melanie, oh. I'm, I see Melanie's hand up. Oh, sorry. Hi there, thank you. I, this is Melanie with We The Speakers. Simple door prizes are, of course, gift cards. Our former uh, past president, Brianna, made a point of going out of her way to uh, give out five and $10 Wawa cards to people that had been involved during her leadership. It was you know, very small, but very distinct. You know, a morning cup of coffee, thinking good thoughts about the person who gave you that card or the group who gave you that card. 
uh, one of the requests that I've had uh, has been for small books on grammar. So uh, I went on to eBay and found some used, like gently used grammar books that I wound up giving away an affiliation to a writing class that I had been involved with. And I still have some extra copies around and I've brought them into We The Speakers when people have asked about uh, accessory books. So there are definitely things that are both practical and, and helpful and fun and inexpensive to do. I frown upon anything that has to do with alcohol or food necessarily because we don't know what people's diets are. Giving somebody with diabetes uh, a sugar snack might seem sweet, but is really not. And there's a whole list of things like that. So I found that things that work in affiliation with speaking and uh, just with being present in people's day-to-day -day is helpful. So small gift cards, gifts pertaining to writing and speaking, even a good pen can be an inspiration, you know, to have a, a good like pen, a good highlighter, just a, like a writing kit, a small notepad to be able to write down thoughts when you know forming speeches or to note when you might fall and use crutch words more than other times. Thank you, Melanie. And let me clarify, gift cards are prohibited. And if they are funded out of the club. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. she bought those out of pocket. Yep, I just wanna make sure that people know. <laughs> I figured as much, Melanie. So it cannot be funded with any of the money that we collect for dues, um, even local dues for the club. We cannot purchase gift cards. We can give gift certificates to the Toastmaster store. We can purchase uh, nominal, nominally priced items, maybe from, as Melanie mentioned, eBay or Amazon, et cetera. And I'll also clarify, whenever I've participated in the purchasing of refreshments for the group, or in token gifts, I have paid for that personally out of pocket. I have never used club funds for any of the activities that I personally do. Okay, thank you. But you you can, except for gift cards. So if you collect local dues, that should be a source of revenue um, for budgeting for those types of expenses. Um, we'll take Paula, Sheila, and then Ellen and then we'll let Susan resume her presentation. Sorry, I've hijacked a bit. Go ahead, Paula. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, we've also given out uh, small books on speaking, different aspects of public speaking. And we also, our club had a club personalized mug that we had, I don't know what it is where everybody puts in their word for what the club means for them. And then we had that printed on the glass with the, the coffee mug, not coffee mug, the travel mug with our name on it. And we gave that out to the guests. But I, I did have a question related similarly, but not as so much giveaway for the guest. If you have a guest speaker, what do you recommend giving the guest speaker as a thank you? since we, we are unable to pay them. And Rhonda, you can remind them about the districts supporting the open houses. I, I can't take away from, from Susan's thunder. Oops, sorry, Susan. <laughs> so Paula Paula's asking about thank you gifts. I'll just ask if you have any ideas for thank you gifts, if you could put those in the chat so we can advance forward. Um, and we'll come back to that, Paula. Sheila, you have a comment or suggestion? Sure. I've been in a number of clubs and <laughs> we've helped a lot of uh, gifts at, over, over the years. And one of the best gifts I've we've done over the years is uh, there's a book called Heart of a Toastmaster by Sheryl Rausch. Mm -hmm. And that book, we, we have like a couple extra on, on hand for gift giving purposes <laughs> we also give out these small notebooks which are very nominal that are from the toastmaster store i think it's less than ten dollars i don't remember how much it is but that's that was well received by people so we we try to keep under budget and try to 
gifts a token gift. Awesome. Thank you, Sheila. And you'll be uh, maybe intrigued. We do have Cheryl coming in as a guest speaker in October. And she, so she will be talking to us about speech craft. So I've posted the information on our Facebook page and I think it was distributed in an email and it appears on our special events calendar on the district website. So take a look at that and register. Cool. I, I met her in DC, but okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, tell other people about her. Okay. Ellen, your comment or question? Hi. Um, one thing I think would be great, and maybe people already do this, is for all the guests who attend, have printed out that handout on the Toastmasters um, International website that it says benefits of being a Toastmaster, just kind of give to give them something that's quick and easy to read that they can take home with them. And, you know, if they're thinking about joining or, you know, that might help tip them over the edge. Uh, as the, I guess the, the one thing I wanted to say about, about um, door prizes or, or whatever, I, I love the idea. Um, it's great if they can be Toastmasters themed, but as we all know, the shipping for ordering is so high that it, you know, it makes it cost prohibitive unless you're uh, to, to put in a smaller order. I guess one thing you could do is maybe um, team up with another club or something and put an order in together and split the shipping. I, I don't know if, if anyone's done that before, but that would be um, maybe a way to make that a little more uh, manageable financially, not spend <laughs> half the money on shipping. Agreed that the cost coming out of our Toastmaster store is so exorbitant. So thank you for that. And the district, you can always reach out to us in, in case we're placing an order. We may be able to combine several orders and then ship out uh, individually or hand deliver it to you. That so would that, be really helpful. That'd be great. Yeah, just you. reach out to us. Great idea. Um, Ruth, and I, I did correct the chat. I, I didn't realize that chat was restricted to the host and co-host, but now everyone can chat with everyone else. So Ruth also mentioned three books from Amazon that they give as a choice to their winners for for any of their, their prizes for open house. A, t a deity also mentioned a virtual thank you card where all the club's office house committee members signs it. I think that's a great idea. I love Paula's idea on the mug. I'm especially intrigued about that. That's just so personal and heartfelt. So thanks for sharing that. Any other suggestions or as they come up, please put those in chat to everyone so we can take away from this meeting some great ideas. Susan, I think this was a good interruption, but back over to you for ideas for an in-person open house. Yes. And would anybody like to share their own experience for an, an in-person open house? Uh, I think the first first thing that the prospective member would see would be your that the uh, appearance. Would you like to be seen in a raggedy pair of jeans and a t-shirt? I would like to see someone dressed like I would like someone I would like to see someone that is dressed nicely, but it doesn't have to be a suit, but they could have like a nice pair of pants or a polo shirt and a skirt for for woman. And once they, once the guests, guests are entered, they could be welcome. They could be welcomed by uh, their sergeant at arms, and then you can ask them how they saw, how they saw our ads. It could be from Facebook or the district website. Uh, name tag, contact information. Name tags are a good are a good thing to have. You do not have to say what their name, uh, you do not have to ask them what their name is again. You could look at their name tag and there it is. The contact information is only used for emails or phone calls. 
and then you may follow up on how you are doing and let you know when the next meeting is and then have a refreshment so you could have a refreshments after the meeting and ask them how the meeting was uh, overall and then you could have everyone introduce themselves to their comfort zone sometimes somebody may not want to uh may not want to raise up and say what their name is and how they how they saw Toastmasters or why they're there for. You can just have them say their name and if they're a guest or a member. And the theme meetings we went over. And, and then and then uh, the district has a $50 open house incentive from the district. You can find it on the district38.org. And then you can, once the event is over, you can send them the agenda and photos to the top three, District 38. And back to you. I don't know about you all, but I I I did glean some some new nuggets for open houses. Sometimes you think because you've been doing this for a long time, you know everything it is to know about various aspects of Toastmasters. So I'll share with you a couple. I love the idea of marketing uh, at the train stations, and I know that we all aren't commuting to work as much, but for those that are commuting, absolutely. Susan also mentioned Starbucks and I go to Starbucks just about every day. I al alternate between Starbucks and Dunkin' Donut. And I keep thinking I will create a flyer so that I can post. And the Starbucks is in Voorhees where my home club, Voorhees Toastmasters Club is located. So why are we missing this opportunity? I see other community newsletters and flyers. So why aren't we a part of that? That grabs people's attention, especially when it's very busy and people are standing around waiting for their drink. So I think that's a great idea for each of you all to do too. I love the idea of changing the virtual backgrounds. I would always think maybe a static background, or I think my background is is pretty neat, but not really. <laughs> so I like to have the flexibility of having multiple backgrounds, maybe that align with the various aspects of the meeting, just to help those people who are unfamiliar with the process, the flow of our meetings. I'll pause and I see there's a question or comment. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm really enjoying the session. Uh, I'm the president of Princeton Toastmasters. So I'm very glad to know there are so many places that we can we try our best to uh, put up flyers on the social media fronts, which uh, like Facebook and LinkedIn, et cetera. Uh, the only thing that we talk about, I think somebody mentioned that even we can have uh, flyers posted in um, grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So that so are you like referring to like Chandrik grocery stores, like say um, we have uh, McCaffrey's, which is uh, located in West Windsor, where I live. Or uh, stores like Walmart or something like what are the stores where it is okay to post the flyers? Absolutely. And Susan, please don't let me commandeer your training. So if you want to jump in and answer. I would say wherever, where, you can ask them if you can, if post you can them. post them. Yeah. And if okay. they said yes, I, I would, I would do it. Okay, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, that. I'm putting grocery stores on my list too because that's a yeah, that's because a, I never thought about it before. You know, we have explored every avenue possible, yes. and we have a very fantastic uh, VPPR who really is uh, pretty uh, highly motivated. So she would be delighted if I if we knew that we have even more options where we could advertise our open houses. I, thank I'm you so sorry. Much. I'm sorry, Vedahi, I have to ask you this. You mean yes. you don't have enough members at Princeton Toastmasters Club? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have, what, 50, 60 members? That's not enough? 65, 65. <laughs> 65. 
We should <laughs> ask you, how do you get They're all these members? <laughs> I guess we are a very uh, enthusiastic and ambitious club, um, which has uh, pretty high goals for ourselves. So we try our best, you know. <laughs> yeah. You all Thank do. You, so you have a great club. I was there a few, several months ago now. And yes, I remember. A, yes, it was. it's a, a tremendous club. So yeah. I know you all are doing some good things. So feel free to put in chat some other suggestions. Absolutely. Thank for you. our members here. I love okay. the idea of having guest speakers and also prefacing this by stating their tenure with Toastmasters so that people are not intimidated. I remember for my club, I had a mentee, a new member who came in. We worked on his icebreaker outside of the Toastmasters meetings for several sessions, and he was judging himself by other people. And he never gave his icebreaker speech. I was so disappointed, not for the time spent and it didn't materialize, but because he did not reach his full potential or a fraction of his potential with Toastmasters because he was in that mode of comparing. He's not good enough. He's not as good as another member that came in the same day as he did. So he... I. I'm assuming he thought they should start at the same level. We're all at different levels. We all have different proficiencies inside and outside of Toastmasters. So we have to preface that, I think, putting it gently, not telling people, not saying that they're you're not as good as this person, but this is where you can be aspirationally. And I love what Susan said, when you put the work in, that's where the magic happens is the routine and rigors of being in your Toastmasters club, taking on active roles, whether they're listening roles, giving feedback or delivering a speech, we can all learn. I also love when Susan mentioned asking the guests for feedback, asking the guest to join. So many people don't join because they weren't asked. We have to invite them into our space. Once we invite them, we want them to know you can have a home here as well. And I also loved when Susan mentioned asking guests who you haven't seen in a while. So I don't know about you, but we have perennial guests. We have, uh, at my church, we call them visiting members. <laughs> and they they like to come, but we want them to be engaged. You don't get the full benefit of Toastmasters by sitting on the sidelines. We let you participate in table topics, but in my club, you can't give a speech. You don't get feedback necessarily. So to enjoy all of those member benefits, we need you to join. I'll pause for Paula's comments or question. I was just going to comment on what you were saying about uh, new speakers. What we tend to do since our meeting is an hour and a half, we will have two to three, if we have time for three speakers, we'll have somebody who's been in the club less than a year, somebody who has been in two or three years, and somebody who is a well-polished, just to see the progression. So when people, because like you mentioned, and Susan mentioned, when you have that really experienced speaker, Sometimes the guests are frightened away. I'll say frightened away because they'll think I'm not that good. So we, if we can only get in two speakers, we'll have a, a beginner speaker and a more advanced, just so we can demonstrate where you can go, where Toastmasters can help you to take yourself. Awesome, thanks Paula. Badahi, am I pronouncing your yeah. name right? Body or baby. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's not an easy name, so I'm perfect. No, you it. tell us how to pronounce it. Okay, it's it's Vaidehi. 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 Oh, Thank yeah, perfect. You. If yeah, I can so say Tchaikovsky, I can say Vaidehi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, what we did is, uh, I would think from my issues, if I was a new uh, prospective member, okay, and I'm visiting a club, um, there are different categories of people. Some are very shy. Some are in the, very bold and there are some some who fall in the middle. So to cater to that and plus uh, even men and women. So what we did this for our open houses, we had 
everybody who filled up the role, starting from somebody who just joined uh, and was there with us only for three months, to somebody who's been there for one year, five years, and then someone who's been here 20 years. And we also had a mix up of uh, sexes, that is both men and women. And we also made sure that we represented uh, different cultures. So basically, whoever's coming, we would, uh, I have, I, when I gave my president's speech, I mentioned that, you know, see, this person is here only for three months and see what a wonderful job they are doing. And this person, has, this member has been here 20 years and see where they have reached from where they started off. So basically, just showing them the journey that even if you're joined new, you can, in three months, this is where you will progress. And then in two years, you will be here. And then in 10 to 20 years, this is where you're going to go. So it kind of gives them a very good idea that it's okay to make a mistake. You know, people might forget, uh, you might get nervous. It's absolutely fine. But um, you don't have to be overwhelmed. You, we are all here. There are all kinds of people. And be very comfortable to join our club. We'll help you along. Like, that's what we did. And we got, uh, and I think out of all the guests we got, most of them have... Uh, uh, shown their interest to join. A few of them are already joined as members. So uh, I think that is what helps because having all experienced members taking on all the roles becomes very overwhelming for a person who's joining. Perhaps I would have run away if I had only seen everybody's phenomenal and I'm just so shy and trying to get my feet in. So that's what I thought. So thank you. I just wanted to share that. I, I thought that was excellent. An excellent perspective on the representation by gender, by tenure, by culture, I think that's fantastic. Margaret? Good morning, everybody. Margaret Kenyon, I'm the VP membership of Sub and Surface Club. And first I want to thank everyone for all the excellent information. And like you said, Rhonda, no matter how many times you attend one of these classes, I always gain new information and insights. And our club has really been re-energized over the past few months. So we're looking forward to our first open house coming up in October. So we've got a lot of uh, solid ideas that I think that we'll be able to, to implement. And I was just remembering when I went to my first meeting, I don't remember if it was an official open house or not, but the thing that struck me most, what well, first of all is being very welcomed by everyone, but also how organized the meeting was. So I guess that gets back to my more of the type A personality, but that really had had impressed me. So thank you. Awesome. And don't forget to submit for your incentive. <laughs> Paula. No. <laughs> okay. Are there any other points of discussion? Or again, Susan, please don't let me take over your training. I'll defer to you, Susan, to, to keep the conversation going. I'd like to ask a question. Um, we're having our open house with the speakers on the second meeting, 23rd of October. Um, I just wanted to know, Rhonda, are you ever available for other groups as well as positively charged? I'm available. Guess what? I'm just like a guest. All you have to do is ask me. <laughs> really? I, I, I can't. I don't know when all of club meetings happen. I don't always note down the open houses. But I usually, I not usually, I always respond to invitations, whether I can or, or can't attend. So feel free to just reach out to me. Okay, thank you. So I have, uh, let me tell you what we did for some of our open houses. One of the last one we had, we have people that have joined Twistmasters for less than a year or a little bit over a year, come and talk up Toastmasters. So there'll be like a table topics between one to two minutes for them to tell people about the experience of why they joined Toastmasters and where it led them to or what it's helped them with in their journey in leadership. One of the other things we do is like the theme. This year we picked a theme for 
Happy New Year or back to school, but the one we did was for Happy New Year. So we said, welcome to the new year, Toastmasters New Year. So we had all the fireworks and our club name displayed under it. So we wanted to play a video, but the only thing was that because we had so many people in attendance, it was over like a hundred people registered. So we were not too sure if the bandwidth will work for the company platform. So we scrapped that. And for our flyers, we pasted them in the cafeteria, the coffee room. We made sure to put them on tables around the company. We put it on the company uh, email, um, the newsletter, the website, just you know, giving a shout out that Toastmasters, we're having an open house. And one of the things we did immediately when we we're having the open house was like, if you're really interested and you would like us to put your name among the people that we are going to call immediately and give you the applications and everything, put your name in chat. So it's not like we're coming back asking for all these names and then the excitement might have gone down. So we just say, put your name in chat. And I think we had about 10 people immediately put their name in chat. And that was, that was good. Awesome, Aditi. Good suggestions. Rizelle has her hand raised. Rizelle, do you have a comment or question? You're on mute. Well, maybe she'll come back. I also love the idea of the person who brings the most guests. I always say gamify things, make it competitive. I'm a competitive person. So, <laughs> so if if people know, oh, uh, Griselle could not unmute. Maybe she'll come back into the meeting. Uh, try again. Or, or Griselle, just post your comment in chat if it's not too lengthy for you to type, but we're here to read it. So yes, foster friendly competition by having members bring guests. I think that's a great idea as well. Paula, meant, Paula asked the question about what to gift your guest speakers with. I love the idea of the personalized mug because it just symbolizes your club. And it's so it's so personal and to me heartfelt because the words on the mug are directly from your members. We do have sets of pins. I know you can't see this, but this was the pin from Joe's year. Susan is probably familiar with these probably all around her house. <laughs> When Joe was district director, he had a pen made with the district's theme. I have Paula's red pen right here, uh, a little further than the arm's length away. I just ordered purple pens for this year with our district theme. By the way, does anyone know what the district theme is? Please see it. Not you, a deity. I know you know. Not Paula either. Anyone? Be extraordinary. This is yes. Rizal. I was able. I was able to unmute. Yeah, that was worth coming off mute for. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be extraordinary. Thanks, Ellen. Yes. No, Excellent. Yes. Absolutely. And the reason why I I chose be extraordinary is because we are all always saying I want to become a better speaker. I want to become a better leader. No, you are. Just walk in it. Be the goal that you have set for yourself. And this is a reminder to myself, and I'm walking right beside you. Just because I sit in the role of district director does not mean that I am perfected in this leadership role or in my communication. So I am taking the opportunity to just enjoy the ride, the faux pas, the challenges, and especially the successes. Carol. Thank you, Rhonda. This is Grisella again. Can I ask the question? Oh, please, please do. Oh, yes. I see that in Facebook District 38, eh, <clears throat> other clubs announce their open houses. Is there a process to do that? So can I do that once I have the flyer 
can we do that ourselves or do please. we have to send the flyer to someone? No, ma'am, please post it. The District 38 Facebook page is for us. The District 38 website is for us to share information, to collaborate with one another. So if you're looking for speakers, believe it or not, there is a, a button there or a form you can fill out if you need speakers for an open house, a demonstration meeting, a special events meeting, whatever the case may be, don't feel like you have to keep things within your club only. There are people across All the right, district excellent. that are very willing to help. So post, post away on the Facebook page. You have to go through, I believe you need a login in order to post on the website or just send a note to the webmaster. Okay, so because I can uh, submit the event in District 38, right? Yes. In calendar? Okay, that's one. I can share in your Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Our, right? our Facebook, our, our, our okay. LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And I just want to say, uh, Margaret, thank you for being here. We are from Sub and Surface Club, so I'm, I'm happy to see her here. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you for answering my question. Thanks, That's Brazil. my division. That's my division. I, I can tell, Aditi, you were so, you were just beaming. <laughs> Thank you. Your representation. Carol has her hand up. Yeah. What I wanted to ask, I want to ask something. I want to make a comment. I um wanted to know about the newsletter. Now, I hadn't been receiving the newsletter up until Helen Flam sent it to Positively Charged. So I wanted to send it out to we the speakers, but I was informed that the district sends it out automatically. But I don't, I don't remember ever really seeing it before. So um, I don't know what what what's the what's 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 true. <laughs> what's the fact? What's the what, what's true? Let me set the record straight. We do have a monthly. District 38 newsletter that our PRM, our public relations manager, her name is Hannah Mershon, that she curates all of the content and distributes. We cannot take for granted that everyone receives it. And for various and sundry reasons, sometimes it goes to spam. If you're if you have a corporate email address on record, sometimes it gets stopped by the servers for your corporation. There may have been a time when you blocked the email address from which the newsletter is sent. There's just a myriad of reasons why people don't receive the newsletter. What we ask our division directors to do, our area directors to do, is just to cascade that information down. So you may receive it multiple times, but we rather you have it multiple times than zero. Right, correct. And when you get the information, Carol, it is not for you to just keep to yourself. If you know of anyone who could benefit from the information, please share it. There's no secret squirrel stuff in there that can't be shared. In fact, we target the newsletter to go to all of our active members. Active meaning they pay dues, they're members in good standing. Mm -hmm. So that information gets out to everyone. So if you send it out again, no harm, no foul. Okay, because I was criticized for that. I said, no, no need to do that. You already, we already, everybody was, it was sent out. <laughs> we can't take for granted that it reached the destination. And sometimes coming from a familiar person will get someone's eyeballs or they'll click through it a little bit more. It, it will get their attention more. So I, I'm sorry you were criticized. I am giving you kudos, not criticism <laughs> for sharing the, the information. I was on with a group last night on learning solution focused therapy. I used to be a therapist and there was this woman on from Australia and she's giving a speech at her daughter's wedding next week. And I gave her all these Toastmasters ideas and she thanked me in chat and she said, thank you so much for the, all the information about Toastmasters. <laughs> oh, good. That's, that's awesome. And sometimes we'll get members. And remember, membership could be transient for some people. People will join, they'll get what they need, and they'll leave. And that's absolutely okay, as long as we're serving their needs. So sometimes people will come when they have a big event, like 
being mother of the bride and having to give a speech or, you know, just different various roles. It's absolutely okay. As long as we're welcoming people, helping them to meet their developmental needs for however long or short they stay in our clubs. And Sheila did put a question, Susan, I don't know if you want to address this, a question in chat how to do an open house for advanced clubs. The issue is that it is only for current Toastmasters who reached level two in pathways. It is not for normies. I'm a normie. <laughs> not really, but it is not for normies. I know people post on the District 38 Facebook. Any other ideas? It's for level two. This is for advanced clubs. So for those of you who are not familiar with advanced clubs, for many advanced clubs, you have to have dual membership. You have to be a member of a Toastmasters club before you become, in order to become a member of the advanced club. The advanced club may have other restrictions such as they may dictate the minimum levels within pathways you must have already completed. Advanced clubs, it's just this, for people who are advanced in their communication and they're looking to take it up a notch and to get those hard evaluations, to put in the work, to improve, to be super extraordinary. And with that said, there may be some other nuances around open houses for advanced clubs that Shill is asking, how do you market and advertise especially when you have that criteria for membership. You can ask other members um, what they do. Absolutely. I think word of mouth and just getting the word out of, around advanced clubs is key. I know that Joe and Paula, correct me if I'm wrong, I think during Joe's term and maybe your term and now my term, we had the ideas of trying to help promote advanced clubs even more. I don't think we fully got there, but I am very willing, Sheila, I don't know if you would want to be a part of this or know anyone, but if you have ideas on how we can promote those advanced clubs a little bit more, we do have those posted on the website. Another thing we can do is, Sheila, you can work with any of the TRIO members, myself, Chris Hulse, our program quality director, or our club growth director, Michelle Westgate. We can help filter our member list and look for people that have level two or above and maybe in specific areas close to where those current advanced clubs reside or meet and we can start targeting to those individuals. Or we can do something, a special write-up in a newsletter so that aspirationally people, even if they're at level one, they know that they're marching toward the goal and can get into an advanced club once they meet the criteria. Well, thank you guys for all the ideas. One of the things that challenge advanced clubs is finding more members. <laughs> this is across the board, not just my advanced club, but other advanced clubs. So I just wanted to hear what other people have, what have they done? I like the idea of just reaching out to people within the district who have reached level two and see if we can find out if they're interested. Maybe it wouldn't be in the general newsletter, but maybe they'll have a special newsletter just for them. Oh yeah, <laughs> a special communication, absolutely. Yeah. So what I did, let me tell you why I know this works. I was maybe five or so days out from the deadline of assigning area directors. And once we got past September 1st, anyone who comes in as an area director doesn't get the full credit as an area director. They could possibly use their area director role as a project. But I wanted people to get their district leadership credit toward their DTM. And I took... I downloaded a current list of our members. I cut off at level three or, or higher. And I got that list of people. I took out the DTMs. So I know that these, these people who are level three or higher without a DTM are probably in pursuit of a DTM. 
And I sent an impassioned plea, please be a leader or don't you want to be a leader in the home district of the world champion of public speaking? Don't you want to be a leader as we enter the centennial, centennial year of Toastmasters? So it was either one or that or just my begging and pleading that got people to commit to being an area director. And within maybe two short days, I was able to fill all of those roles. So I, I say that to say this may be an effective way to target market for certain things that we want to bring to the awareness of our members. Some may not be aware. Some people are still in the silo of their club and don't know that this there's a whole other world of Toastmasters out there. So Sheila, I'm more than happy to help you with that if you need me to. Thank you, everyone. Yes. And Linda and Dory posted, I don't know if it's Linda or Dory, so I say Linda and Dory, posted uh, at we at Excelsior Advanced Toastmasters, we post on TI members' Facebook pages and the D26 Facebook page. Members are encouraged to invite other members from the home members, probably club. So they go out and individually post on people's individual pages, which is always a good way to get people's attention. So if you don't have a VP PR or a social media person in your club, you may want to think about that role because that's that could be a full-time job posting things. Uh, let's see. We place the membership requirements on the flyer. I think that's absolutely, absolutely key or else you will may have to turn some people away, away uh, initially because they don't meet the requirements of being a member of an advanced club. And I think just as importantly, you need to show the benefits of being in the advanced club. So what have the outcomes been for some of your members? Did they get paid speaking jobs? Have they been able to speak to audience of 100 or two or 500, whatever those things that may be attractive to people and may be a benefit, I think you need to list those. And Paula probably will shake her head because she knows I love videos. So consider capturing some of those benefits, those testimonials in video form. People's attention spans are short. People don't want to read a whole lot. So dazzle them with their with their ears and their eyes at the same time. A one to two minute, almost like a table topic advertisement on your advanced club. And maybe not just one person, but a series of people. Carol. Okay, what I wanted to say is, can this chat be saved? Yes. If you click okay. on the ellipses at the bottom, mm -hmm. okay, it should say I'm using save a new chat. computer. That's why I was totally rude at the beginning. Oh, I'm it's just okay. Used to it. I, I didn't. So, okay. And the other thing, is, <laughs> the reason I became area director was because I didn't want to be. Uh, they, uh, I was sitting in a meeting. I, and all of a sudden, I'm nominated for president, and it was like, ugh, okay. So anyway, I rather than just um being in the vacuum as president, I said, I want to be area director. I want to get to know other clubs, see what they're doing, what I can bring to my club. So <laughs> thank you. Keep that information sharing because I think that is a critical aspect of the area director role. You have the frontline experience of mo multiple clubs and just being that hub and reaching out to those clubs, but bringing the information back uh, between amongst the clubs, I think is absolutely key. It's going to make them stronger. Yeah, Paula. I, I guess Paula will be our last commenter because I know we're at the we're one minute over actually. So Paula, I, I was just going to suggest, especially for the advanced clubs. I know a lot of you specialize in a certain area. Like some of them will specialize in evaluations. Make sure to advertise that because if someone is looking to become a better speech evaluator, and that's what your club specializes in they are more likely to to navigate towards your your club. So, because I just, I hate to say this, but I just learned that once I was on the trio that the advanced clubs tend to specialize in one 
particular area more than the others. So that's a great way to get people, more people in. Thank you. Share, share your flyer for your meeting with all the clubs, leadership teams in your immediate surroundings. Thanks, and maybe Paula. they'll share it. And, and speaking of flyers, I have to plug this too. So Paula probably laughs at me because she knows that I am unconventional in my print and flyers and I want to dazzle and razzle everyone and, and not have it look monotone, not look the same as all other Toastmasters branded material. That's fine. That's great. Toastmasters provides us with a lot of templates, but I usually go rogue. I often use, now I use Canva. I used to do everything myself, which Canva has made it so much easier because with Canva, they have millions, it feels like, of templates. You can customize the color palette. They have numerous fonts, like just a plethora of fonts that you can use and other images and things that can enhance your flyers and, and print material. We have a session coming up this month with Leslie Crudup on creating with Canva. So creating flyers and other materials. It is posted to our Facebook page. It is posted on the district's website. So that is a quick plug for that. So if you're looking for something that's really eye-catching that will garner the attention of passersby who may not be familiar with the Toastmasters logo, this may be a class that you want to attend. I believe it's just an hour or hour and a half, uh, but I promise you it will be very beneficial for you going forward and attracting people. Susan, I'll give you the last few words to close us out here. Any other words of wisdom? No. None. <laughs> she's giving you all of her words of wisdom thank you Susan I think this is the first training where I saw that the slides were actually shared during the presentation so they are in the chat so please download those and if you have any other suggestions for us by way of open houses that Susan can add to her presentation I'm sure she's open to that she's given another presentation I think it's October 19th, I believe. Next month, right. Next month, which next month, I think, starts tomorrow. <laughs> so <laughs> in October. So I'm sure collectively we can help share information with other people by sending our suggestions to Susan. Thank you all very much. I hope you have a pleasant, pleasant Saturday. And we'll leave this open for you all to download the slides as well as to save the chat if you need to. Susan, thank you very much. Great job in presenting this information and helping to lead the discussion.